is Justin Oliver. I'm at the 2013 Students for Liberty uh, North Texas Regional Conference. I'm uh, with Dr. Roderick Long, uh, co-founder of the DFW Alliance, or the Alliance of Libertarian Left. He's one of the uh, featured speakers today. Uh, can you tell us more about what your topic is? Oh, yeah, the topic is about the, uh, the relationship between free market libertarianism and radical leftism, mm -hmm. two positions that you know, usually are hostile to each other. But what I'm going to argue is that they actually are natural complements, that, okay. that uh, you know, if you're attracted to one of them, you ought to be attracted to the other as well. Well, um, I have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. So, um, I know in response to some libertarians, communitarians sometimes argue that libertarians give an oversimplification or overemphasis on the on the on the uh, virtue of liberty or the value of liberty. Um, so they may argue that a good society would also require equality, um, fraternity. What do you think? What do you say to those um, objections? And do you think a society that overemphasizes liberty? would be one that you know, impoverishes society, um, alienates us from our neighbors, things like that. Okay, well I think it's a mistake to think of these as competing values. I think that if you, if you emphasize liberty more, that means you have to have less uh, mm -hmm. equality or less fraternity. I mean, in a way, I think that equality is the core notion of liberty mm -hmm. because the notion of equality of authority, I don't have some special right to give you orders, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have some special right to run your life, uh, and I don't get it by you know, having more people on my yeah. side. So in that sense, you know, libertarian rights are an expression of equality. And then beyond that, if we look at you know, if people who are concerned about socioeconomic inequality, an enormous amount of that is caused by government interference in the market because mm -hmm. competition is a leveling force. If someone's getting really rich doing something, other people will imitate it and compete, uh, you know, compete that those customers away. So if you mm -hmm. see persistent uh, vast inequalities of wealth in society, it's usually a sign that competition is being impeded in some way. And as for fraternity or solidarity or however you want to talk about that, um, there's no reason that that has to be imposed by force. And on, on the mm -hmm. contrary, if you're imposing it by force, that implies that human beings are naturally atomistic and don't, you know, don't form affiliations with mm -hmm. each other and have to be sort of forced to from, you know, from the outside. Whereas if you really believe that we're social beings, you don't need about to fight at liberty in order to, uh, you know, to get solidarity going. Yeah, I think you've written about that before, so that's a good point. Um, you've also written in the past that uh, freed markets are ones where we would probably expect flatter, less hierarchical firms, uh, more numerous, and uh, just smaller firms in general. Um, is there any reason to think um, that, or any way to know exactly how much smaller or how less hierarchical they would be, and how quickly that transition take place? I don't think, in terms of how much, I don't think we can re we can predict too precisely. I think that. You know, we have reason to think that, you know, we have reason to, to believe what, what direction the change would be in and that it would be significant mm -hmm. change. But when it comes to exact percentages, you know, like, you know, so that, you know, 87.3 percent of the economy will now be co-ops or something, no, we can't make that kind of uh, prediction. As to how fast, though, fairly quickly I'm inclined to think because mm -hmm. just look at all the businesses that people would like to start right now, especially sort of, you know, individuals, you know, poor people, uh, you know, individual proprietorships or small mutual aid societies would be, that are not capital intensive, it would be mm -hmm. easy to start. And the only reason they're not started is because the regulation's saying, well, you know, you can't run a cab service out of your car unless you have a $100,000 license. Mm -hmm. Or you can't serve food in your home without the vast regulatory apparatus yeah. you have to jump through. So when you see that, you know, when you see the mound of obstacles in the way of something, it seems reasonable to think that if you removed all those obstacles, yeah. you would get a lot of progress in that direction. I think it makes sense too. Um, and some people make more just sort of basic objection that there is there can be no such thing as a free market uh, because in every market, even the most radical libertarian supports restrictions on how people use their property for they can't pollute other people's property. So isn't so they would argue so the actual discussion isn't over whether there should be restrictions or not. There should be the discussion over which kind of restrictions and shouldn't so. It, is the idea of a free market, is that sort of a na naive standard? Well, I mean, the libertarian idea is not that I'm going to be free and no one else is. Mm -hmm. you know, the idea is that we're all going to be free and we're all going to be equally free. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if I start doing something that infringes on your freedom, then that's, you know, that's not an exercise of freedom in the libertarian sense. Mm -hmm. For li freedom in the libertarian sense is the freedom to do what you want with your own life and property so no long as you are respecting the equal right of others. Mm -hmm to do the same. Yeah. 
So, um, so in the case of you know cases where I shouldn't pollute, it's not that it's not oh here's an exception to liberty. It's that polluting is an invasion of your liberty. Okay. Well, any other points you want to leave us with, or any other uh, you know wisdom mm -hmm. you can tell us about? Uh, okay. Well, one thing is I think that. Um, uh, as a result of, you know, for various historical reasons, I think that libertarians had sort of a long association with the right, um, partly in response to you know, the rise of very strong forms of state socialism and so mm -hmm. forth. And although that alliance has broken down to a great extent, I think there are still senses in, ex ex uh, senses in which a lot of libertarians still have some right-wing attitudes. They have a tendency to, you know, to you know, at least many do to have to leap to the defense of big business, mm -hmm. or uh, to um, you know to uh, think that people who talk about economic inequality are driven solely by envy and yeah. things like that, without stopping to consider, well, wait a second, you know, aren't a lot of these big businesses, uh, you know, really the recipients of government privilege, and isn't that inequality something that libertarians should worry about mm -hmm. too? And, you know, often they will they will grant that principle in theory. They'll yeah. say, well, of course, yeah, you know. In fact, it's, it's interesting that the term crony capitalism has become so popular just in the last couple of years. But often I th it see it as a case where they'll take the lip service to the idea and then they'll, you know, in practice, they'll slide right back to, to uh, you know, praising the, you know, praising big business. You know, it's not as bad as it used to be, I think. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's worth keeping in mind that, uh, you know, this isn't something you should just pay lip service to mm -hmm. when the issue comes up. But notice how pervasive it is. And I think a lot of libertarians underestimate the extent of the pervasiveness of corny capitalism. They think of, they think of our system as being sort of approximately free market, and then there are these bits of corny capitalism, yeah, like barnacles yeah. on it. Even though they may grant that there are a lot of barnacles, they still think of the thing underneath that's being basically a free market. Mm -hmm. But you know, at some point, you know, the barnacles become the system.